I'm just a mom and a housewife and that sort of thing. And I, but I love the community. I came to the community way back when as a teacher. I taught home ec here for three years, got married. We had five kids and five foster kids and many grandchildren. And we've enjoyed every bit of it. So from the time I began, I've always taught a Sunday school class. And for years I had the choirs. There was a period of time I had three choirs, no four, adult and three kids choirs. We had a lot of fun with it. So between 4-H and just the community, I have felt a real need to do this because there are so many children who don't have somebody who really cares about them. And I have found I can relate to them. We started early with 4-H. When I was 10, I started, and you could be in 4-H in till you're 21. I enjoyed 4-H immensely. <clears throat> One summer, there was a little family seven miles west of Toledo, and they didn't have a car. So I rode my bicycle out to have a 4-H meeting at their house once a week. I tried to do some figuring. I've had about a thousand children in 4-H, because, well, I've led a club now since my first daughter was 10, and she was born in 61, so you can do a quick math there. And I have kept the list of all the kids I've had. I've had over a thousand children in 4-H. But the funny thing now is I, I meet them in the store, but now I see the boy, some of the boys I haven't. Well, hi, Eleanor, glad to see you. And this cute little round-faced 10-year-old is now a gray-haired, bearded gentleman, and I don't know him <laughs> because he doesn't look the same. Kids I've had, okay, they're now the clerks in the stores, they're the young parents, they're the, the people whose children I have in things now. Every time a kid smiles at you and knows your name, that's a gift. Well, God made all these people and he loves every one, but he doesn't have physical hands to touch them. We are supposed to do that. I, I, I've been blessed. Doris Whitten wrote the book Up From the Prairie she was the second librarian, and I was the sixth. And she did it for the 100 years, but I knew 150 years was coming up in a few years. So I knew I was gonna write a book. <laughs> and that's when I started collecting anything that anybody would give me. Everybody kept coming in and asking, how did Casey get its name? And well, Actually, Doris Whitten had it in her book on page 11, right in the middle of the page. <laughs> so I, this is the way I started out. Uh, I, was, I had asked that question so many times that I just, I knew where it was at. <laughs> People would come in and they would do research and I would always say to them, well, now when you get done with your books and you don't need them anymore, uh, you know, the research books, you might donate them to the library. And then uh, I would like to have a copy of your family history. So it just kept going. I had another lady that um, asked me if I would like to have her two scrapbooks of uh, obituaries. So of course I said yes. And I said, if you don't mind, I'll number yours and then I'll index them. But she was agreeable to that. Um, Joyce was doing a um, uh, something for school and she chose Cumberland out there and found out we didn't have much information so that might have been right there where I realized we needed more and more and more. We had a lot of pictures 
And at that time, I didn't have a scanner or a, a um, laptop. So we were just photocopying them. And um, then we were given 28 years of, the, of hodgepodge of the old Banner Times. And we cut that out. Uh, interesting things, you know, for history that way. We tried to put them in decades so that we had some rhyme or reason. Uh, one of the girls wanted to stop where Doris Whitten uh, started. And I said, no, we got to go clear to the, clear to the end. It was, it, was a, it was a great job. It was a fun job. You never had to get up and go to work. I still just, if some, uh, not too long ago, I got a picture of the KZ when the morning it exploded. I hadn't seen that one before. So it's been 14 years since I, we got the book out. And I don't know what I'm gonna do with it, but I've got it. <laughs> I have over 800 photos on a CD of just Casey and the surrounding area. And I would like for people to continue to send me the photos or even, even information that they might find that I don't have. Because someday somebody's gonna need this. Big things in a small town in Casey, is, it, it just kind of happened. It just happened that one, one, one of our family vacations out in Denver, Colorado, we rode a little train up to Silver Plume, and my wife's aunt, uh, Gail Green, she asked Diane to go by in this tea shop in Silver Plume, Colorado, and just look around and see what she thought, because her friend ran it. And We'd done that, and uh, my kids and, and, and my wife uh, went away from there, saying, man, this is something we need for our, our town. So. Um, I said, if we're going to do this, I want to do it, but I don't want to start another um, food business downtown and just try to uh, comp and compete for the same folks that's in the town. If we're going to do this, we're going to think outside the box. We're going to try to get new customers here to our store and help our, our neighboring businesses to uh, expand their businesses also. So. Um, and then that's where the wind chime come in. Uh, my, my grandmother had wind chimes when I was a kid, and uh, every time I hear a wind chime, I think of her. It just gives me a, a just an awesome, cozy feeling, you know, about you know how smells and sounds just do that. But one one evening, I was listening to my wind chimes at home, and I thought, I wonder what the world's largest wind chime is. So I looked it up, and you know, being a, a pipeline company, uh, and wind chimes are pipe, I thought, what the heck, you know, it uh, it would be an easy do. So we checked into the the Guinness Book and found out the pathway we had to go for that and, and we started in uh, roughly probably late 2009 and around uh, 2011 we completed the wind chime. In June of uh, 2012 we opened up the, uh, the tea shop beside it. Um, it's called the Whitling Whimsy, Double W, and uh, it's a whimsical place and it was named after my grandmother uh, Letha Whitling. So, and that was supposed to be the end of the story. <laughs> but as, as things uh, progressed, the family decided to do uh, another project and, and we, uh, we decided to do uh, the world's largest golf tee. As we was building that, uh, my wife's cousin, Jeanette Husengay, has a yarn studio on the corner and I like to chainsaw carve. And uh, so I set out and done, while we was doing the golf tee, I'd done two more Guinness Book Records would be a world's largest crochet hook and the world's largest knitting needles and uh, donated them to Jeanette. So we had four world's largest and that's when I really seen that uh, this is this is something that's really going to stick. After we completed the uh, golf tee and got it up we kicked in four more. We'd end up doing the uh, world's largest pair of wooden shoes, world's largest mailbox, the world's largest uh, rocking chair, and then we got the world's largest pitchfork. That gives us eight now. And we have some future ones coming out. How we got the name Big Things in a Small Town is, uh, is kind of neat because we was all in our office sitting around and you know they said, what, what's, what are you going to do when uh, somebody beats the wind chime? And uh, we sitting around and I said, well, it, it'll still be a big thing in a small town. So that's that's where we we dubbed that if i didn't have a, a day job that i had to be at work every day i would just 
love to walk around and visit with the tourists because it, uh, what, what's really cool is you know you just you just kind of blend in with them and you, you, you act like you don't have anything to do with this and just just listen to what they say and how they they talk and it's just uh, it's just uplifting. Say on a, any given day now, uh, when the sun's out and it's a nice day, um, you can expect anywhere from I'd say 150 to, to 300 people in a day, and uh, during the summer tourism stuff, and uh, it's just really exciting when you see all the parking lots of downtown that's that's filled. You know they're full and and people driving around trying to find a place to park. It's just it's an awesome feeling. I think it's quite an asset for the little uh, town of KZ to have 22 state-sanctioned horseshoe courts, a great facility uh, for our small community. We uh, hold two sanctioned horseshoe tournaments every year. The first one is the uh, Memorial Day weekend, and we held it on Saturday. And the uh, second one's the 4th of July tournament and uh, of course we've had the privilege since we got our courts uh, uh, up to date to uh, host the uh, state, Illinois State Horseshoe Tournament, which we have done for several years now. And we bring several people in town because uh, there's the first tournament we had here for the state horseshoe tournament uh, there's about 230 pitchers and of course they usually bring their families with them. So we figure we probably brought another seven, eight hundred people in into Casey. The park course have had uh, horseshoe courts in them for several years, probably clear back to 1940. And uh, we just had two to three courts at that time, and people seemed to get a little more interested in it. I can remember throwing horseshoes with my dad on Sunday afternoon at the Courts, but probably oh, 10 to 15 other horseshoe stores. And uh, we would spend many Sunday afternoons throwing horseshoes. And it seemed like over the years then, as I progressed, uh, a lot of men lost interest in the uh, throwing of horseshoes. But we had uh, three faithful horseshoe pitchers that stayed with it over several years. And uh, at one time, back in 1991, they got the idea that thought that we could hold the Illinois State Horseshoe Tournament here in this area. So we made a bid for it, and uh, next thing we knew, we got the bid back and said that we were awarded the bid. In order to hold the host the state tournament, we had to have at least 20 courts. Jim Wilson, Charles Cook, Don Boyer, the three faithful horseshoe pitchers, went to work replacing horseshoe, uh, replacing the courts, adding courts, adding the necessary fencing, and also adding the necessary uh, lights. Local businessmen and several individuals helped us along this line. We uh, uh, have uh, had seven state tournaments held since 1992. The four of us that put this all together have been inducted into the State Horseshoe Hall of Fame. That's Don Boyer, uh, Jim Wilson, uh, Charles Cook, and myself. I'm enthusiastic about pitching horseshoes. It's a game that anybody can throw. You meet a lot of interesting people, and uh, I just like to be able to, especially tournaments, to bring people into town and show them what we've got here, and uh, I think it helps the community. Uh, my story's about Norma Jean McElwee, who is my grandmother, she has uh, seven children, and she has 18 grandchildren, and 22 
great-grandchildren currently and still growing. So um, she has just been always so much fun and we just love, you know, being around her. She's just a light in our family. And her, her greatest joy, I think, aside from her family is, is baking and, and cooking for, for other people. It's always been my dream to have a bakery and I share that dream with my grandmother, Norma Jean. And so when the opportunity arose in November of 2016, um, I just really felt led to do that. And so I called my mom and we discussed whether we would go forward with it or not. And so my mom and I, we purchased it and opened in January of 2017. In April of 2017, my Aunt Deb came on board. Mom and I um, were discussing names for the bakery and I, I always had in the back of my mind that I wanted to name it after Grandma. And so I asked Mom, what, what do you think we should name it? And she said, well, I, I don't know. What do you think we should name it? And I just looked at her and I said, we have to name it after Grandma. And so that led into us naming it Sweet Norma Jean's Bake Shop. So when we started the bakery, we decided that we wanted to have a product that, that stood out and that really made you feel like you were sitting back at Grandma's table. Um, and so we, that's why we did incorporate a lot of Sweet Norma Jean's recipes because there's nothing like that homemade came from your grandma sweet or pie. We want them to feel um, the love that we have for them and, and we learn that from Norma Jean because she absolutely loves making people feel welcome. She's always been the person who just invites anyone in. Um, she loves people. She loves baking for people and so do we. So we really want our customers to feel that when they walk in the door. We even have people at our family Christmases that aren't related to us because she'll, everyone's welcome, you know, she'll just invite anyone off the street, you know, she just has that kind of heart. She's just an amazing lady and we really, really wanted to honor her and her name with, with our bakery. Her, her dream was finally coming true and she loves to say, and this is my favorite thing, um, anytime anyone will say, you know, Norma, you know, anything about the bakery, she'll say, well, my name is on the window. And she is so cute when she says that. It's, it's fast becoming my favorite thing she says <laughs> because she's quick to remind anyone that her, it's her name that's on the window and it's really cute. Wow, some more great oh, stories mama. right there. I love that story about your mama. I know. My mama is one of the sweetest people ever, and Crystal is right. We have had strangers at our Christmas. True story. That's okay. We hope you're watching tonight, sweet Norma Jean. We, we wish she was here. Uh, we've got some calls. Yeah, let's some say thanks. some thank yous. Yeah, we ahead. have Martha from Mount Toon. We have Janet from Casey, and we have Marsha from Casey. Awesome. Thank you thank so you. much. We have Anna from Hume, and I hope that you get to feeling better, Anna, and I know you and Kim are watching it tonight, so uh, thank you for calling in. Anne from Casey, thank you so much. Anna, oh, hold it. Hold it. I'm sorry. Oh, okay. Um, Cindy from Washington, Illinois. So thank you. I'm yeah, not sure where Washington great. is located. I think it's up by Springfield. Oh, wow. Thank you so much for calling. And Michael, now Michael has got it going. Guess what? He first wanted four DVDs, and then he decided, you know what? Nobody else is going to get sick, so I'm going to go ahead and get six. Yeah, thank so you, he, Patty. Yeah, thank yeah, you, Patty. Yeah, he was talking to Patty on the phone, And so now, was you. he in her class, maybe? Was, I, I, don't you know. Know. I don't know. I don't know what we're talking okay. about. So, we'll have to ask her later. So thank you, Michael, for calling and for uh, getting the six DVDs. Now everybody else should do the same thing. That's right. <laughs> so give us a call. The number is at the bottom of your screen. We know that Facebook is blowing up out mm -hmm. there because I've seen a lot of comments, and I've seen some comments from my classmates, especially my Coleman, I got your comment tonight, and your mother-in-law is back here, and I said hi to her for you. So um, Sharon is over there answering the phone right now. But over here on this side of the set, I have Lois Dell Somerville, and Lois Patty. Dell um, told the story about Library Preserves History, and Lois Dell actually provided a number of different photos for us for a lot of these different stories. So why don't you talk to us while I hey, move this phone over here about how that started with you and getting all those photos. Okay. Hi. Um, 
I worked at the library for a number of years, and I knew I was going to write a book, and I started collecting. So I collected pictures for over 25 years, and at the end of when I retired, the sesquicentennial was coming up, and I wanted to have the book ready by then. Yeah, that's right. Now, did you write that book all by yourself? No, I, I started, and I lost my husband. So I had a friend by the name of Joyce Skinner. She said, would you mind if I went ahead and helped? So between her and Martha Reed, we got the book done. Yes, you did. And you preserved a lot of history, and we're seeing a lot of that tonight. So it's been a pleasure working with you, Lois. Thank you. Thank you. And thank you, Joyce Skinner, for all of the efforts that you have put sure. into archiving local history in Casey as well. Jaina, over to you. Hey, it's exciting over here. The phones are busy. And if you can see behind me, almost all the phones are busy. So I even heard somebody say, I think I may want six DVDs, so thank you so much for calling. Right now, if the number's at the bottom of your screen, please consider calling WEIU and pledging your support tonight. For $75, we will send you a copy of Casey, This Is Our Story. And if you'd like to share one with a friend or family member, uh, you could get two for 120 and then 180 would get you three. And if you're like one of the people that want six, yeah. <laughs> figure out the math. A six times 60, that's $360. Yes, it is. So we big thank supporter, for calling. Big time. I think Jim's coming over hey, here. Jim. I don't know if he's getting something neat or if someone wants to talk to him. But <laughs> either so, way, it is exciting. It's okay. it's, it is exciting. We love it. Mm -hmm. Love it. Love Keep it. Keep on calling. If you're out there and you haven't called yet, we need you to get on the phone right now. We're switching phones around that's for people. That's okay. Lois Dell is needing a call right now, so oh, yes, oh, somebody's Lois on Del. her phone. Oh, no, someone's on her phone because I had to talk to her a moment ago, and somebody called. I had to move the phone over. So if you want to talk to Lois Dell, give her a call here in just a few minutes. There's Jim back there on the phone as well. They're, Bernie needs somebody to call him over here. He's looking, so Yeah, he's looking very sad. If you, if you love Bernie Morgan, you need to call him right now. Yes, we Thank you so much. If, if you'd like one DVD, it's $75. If you'd like two or more, they are $60 each. And Ken, why should somebody call in and support this program? Well, I'll tell you what, why shouldn't you? Because if you know Casey, that's all about showing the love to Casey tonight. And if you know some of the people here, call in and say, hey, you did a great job on your story. Mm -hmm. Or I didn't know that. Thanks right. for sharing that. That's why you need mm -hmm. to call in is to not only say thanks, but also get a piece of local history for yourself or for a family member. Well said. You know, we talk about uh, us, WEIU, producing a program like this. And we are going to be honest with you. There is no other television station in central Illinois that would do a program just on KZ. We're talking an almost a two hour program yes. just on KZ Illinois. We didn't dictate the stories that were gonna to be told. Bernie was on the champion group and uh, with some other people as well. And they did some research and they said, we wanna tell the story about the park. We wanna tell the story about the horseshoes. That's the kind of stories that work within a community when, when we wanted people to get volunteers. That's how it worked. That's how it works. And speaking of working with yes. people, Eleanor Markwell, mm -hmm. what a great story. Mm -hmm. You know, I had the pleasure of sitting in Eleanor's house with her and going through tons of scrapbooks. Mm -hmm. So if you know Eleanor, if you were one of her 4-H <laughs> oh kids, my gosh, that's a lot. you call in tonight and you support her mm -hmm. efforts of telling the story and showcasing all those kids she worked with. I think she said that she worked with over a thousand kids. It's a lot. Somebody's waving on TV. I love it. Um, she worked with over a thousand children and you know how many people love Eleanor Markwell. Yeah, she's so a if, lovely lady. If you're one of those kids that was were impacted by her love and support and her encouragement, you know, get a copy of this because mm -hmm. your picture may be on one of them, on one of the store on her stories. You know, another storyteller we just heard from was Jim Bolin, mm -hmm. and we know that Casey has been getting yes. a lot of publicity over the past couple mm -hmm. of years because of all the big things. And he told the story tonight, but right. he told it in a little bit different way, didn't he? Yes, he did. You know, when we sat down with him, I said, Jim, I know that you've told the story time and time mm -hmm. again with a lot of people, but we want to hear the really the heart of your story and the heart of his story was that his you know his grandma mm -hmm. you know used to used to go to her house and he'd hear, hear wind chimes and he thought you know what I want to do something cool like that, you know, with the pipe company yeah. that he has. It, it worked. It and did look what's work. happened. And with the tea shop and different mm -hmm. things like that, it was about helping a family's dream come true. Yes. 
You know, and Jim is one of those people that has the biggest heart. I mean, yeah. he wants people to come to Casey and to be successful, whether it's a small business or, or just to come and experience the love of the community of Casey. I saw Marcy giving a big <laughs> thumbs up back there. So somebody <laughs> is making Marcy happy yes. back there. We love that she's mm -hmm. here tonight as well as Sharon, too, because they're with the newspaper down mm -hmm. in Casey, the Casey Westfield Reporter. We've gotten a lot of pu mm -hmm. publicity from yes. them, and we want to thank them for also supporting through some pictures and different right. things like that for the stories as well. To put a program like this together, it takes a lot of people, but we always depend on the local newspaper, we depend mm -hmm. on the library, yes. and we depend on just, we've even did shout out shout outs on Facebook to get some photos. Yes, we stories. have, and the Historical Society mm -hmm. as well. Mm -hmm. Hey, speaking of some more photos, the horseshoe story, yes. uh, Wayne Davis is in the house tonight, and he did a great job, <laughs> and you know what's my favorite part about that story? What? My grandpa, my Aww. grandpa is in there throwing horseshoes and showing off mm -hmm. an award. And I talked to Wayne about that, and he mentioned he remembered my grandpa wow. and, and doing horseshoes with him. So that's, love you, grandpa. Yeah, that's so cool. You know, the cool another cool thing about this program is the amount of photographs that go into the stories. Mm -hmm. And so if you're watching tonight, you just may see a picture of yourself on there because there are a lot of individuals in this program. Yes, there are. Now, we've got a lot of people calling in tonight. Are we going to give them a shout out over the next break, or how's that going well, to work? Well, if we get them from Amy, and we'll know how many we, she's going to give we've to got us right a few. now. So, we've got, so if you're sitting there and you want to call, the number's on the bottom of your screen. Join the fun that we're having here tonight at WEIU-TV. For $75, we'd love to send you a copy of the very program that you're watching. And if you would like to get one for yourself and somebody else, they're $60 each. Big, Big Mike, Mike's on the Big phone. Mike from Marshall. Thanks for watching, Big Mike. We knew you'd be calling in to support. Now, Big Mike was here for Marshall Live Night, and boy, did we have a good time with him. Yes, we did, but tonight's all about Casey, and we appreciate Marshall supporting mm -hmm. Casey we tonight. Do. Thank Here's you. Here's a big, kid, big kiss, Mike. Big mm -hmm. hug. Yeah, hug there. We <laughs> love him. But that's what's cool about it, uh, getting together at these communities. The people that are here tonight, the people that have been our storytellers, it's not over when they leave tonight. No. We become friends with them, and we want to support Casey and we want to go shop at Casey. I mean, we want to be a part of Casey. We're just not here just to, you know, for one night. We're here to have fun and to be a part of their community. Yeah, in a different way, telling personal stories. We have laughed with these folks. We have cried. We have hugged. Mm -hmm. We have We've done all kinds of things to get these stories to you tonight. We're going to get some thank yous to you here okay. from some people throughout oh. our viewing area. Okay, Herb and Kay from Oakland. That's my brother. And they have not been on Direct TV. We haven't been on Direct TV. It just came back on. Yes. And I told Herb, if we get back on, are you going to become a member and support it? And he said, absolutely. There you go. So thank, thank you. Thank you, Herb. Uh, we've got Jeff JJ from Charleston. Thank you so much, JJ. I know who you are. How about Amy from KZ? Awesome. Charlotte from KZ and Doris from KZ. I bet I know who that is. Who? Doris, thank you for watching tonight. Wow. It's so much fun Good. seeing the storytellers. Hello to you, excited. too. <laughs> It's so much fun seeing the storytellers get excited when people call them and they know yeah, them. Yeah, I just love that. Thank you so mm -hmm. much for calling in and supporting our efforts tonight. And keep on calling. Yeah, we've got some more stories coming your way. We're going to hear from my uncle, Ed Richardson, over there. Him and my aunt Joyce are in the house tonight about the toy fund. The softball capital is coming up. Mm -hmm. The reporter, the mm -hmm. airport with Larry Patchett and Moonshine mm -hmm. Store. And one more person to thank, Eleanor from KZ. Thank Eleanor, you. thank you. You not only was a great storyteller but she's supporting the program that did you know she's supporting WEIU so that's, that's cool right too. we love you Eleanor and Marcy from Casey we know who you are too yes thank you so don't go anywhere <laughs> we've got more stories coming your way thank you